one of the just one of the uh, one of the more it's a it's a different miracle than than what we've looked at in the past. This is a miracle in which uh, Jesus Jesus does not uh, touch anybody. Uh, he does not speak to anybody uh, to the person that's being healed. Uh, he doesn't uh, go over and 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 address them or touch them in any way. Uh, and yet, still, this person, wherever they were, they got healed, and it was all through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So it's a it's a it's a unique miracle in the sense of how Jesus does this. Uh, in Luke chapter seven, I I entitled this miracle right here. Healing someone he never saw. Healing someone he never saw. I'm glad that God gave us this miracle in the Bible because it, it gives us a hope. It gives us this, this love in our heart over the fact that, that Jesus, Jesus will hear the prayers of someone thousands of miles away and answer that prayer on the other side of the earth. It, it, here's people that were asking him to do something for somebody that Jesus never saw, never touched, never spoke to. He just heard from people, this person needs healing. And he, and he never went to them, and he never addressed them, and he never went over there and, and touched them in any way, and yet that person still got healed. And, and to me, that just gives us such hope that, that through our addressing to the Lord, our loved ones that, that could be somewhere else in this world, they could be on the other side of town, they could be on the other side of the country. They could be on the other side of the world. And yet God still hears our prayer and still addresses that prayer. Amen. And, and so it's just, it's one of those wonderful, wonderful miracles that the Lord does that's different than all the other miracles. Let's look in Luke 7. We'll read the first 10 verses it says, now, when he had ended uh, all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear unto him, was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would Come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying that he was worthy for whom he should do this. For he loveth our nation, and he had built us a synagogue. They're talking about this centurion, this Roman centurion that had built this synagogue for the Jews. And so that's why they're saying to Jesus, this man's worthy for you to come and heal his servant because he's done wonderful things for us. Verse 6, then Jesus went with them. And when he had, it was now not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest come uh, or, or should enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man set under authority, having under me soldiers, and I say unto one, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and tur turned him about and said 
unto the people that followed him. I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. They that uh, were sent, uh, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. That word whole means completely healed. Amen. Completely healed. This is a different kind of miracle. You know, usually when Jesus did miracles, he did miracles by touching somebody. Somebody cried out to him and he went over to them and he, and he touched them. If they were crippled, he might touch them or reach over and tell them to stand up and walk or he spoke directly to them. He, he somehow had some type of direct contact with that person. But here he didn't have any contact with this person at all. This person was in another place, was in a centurion's house. And, 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 and Jesus wasn't even anywhere close by at the time when, when they came to get him. Jesus many times had, had something to, to say to the person that needed healing. He would tell them to arise. He would tell them to open their eyes. He would tell them to walk. He would tell them to get up. He would, tell, he would speak directly to them. He didn't, he didn't speak directly to this person at all. Jesus would touch eyes, touch legs, touch the cripple in some way. He would, he would speak to the leper. He would, he would have some type of uh, contact with the person that needed healing. But here, here he had no contact whatsoever. Didn't touch him, didn't speak to him, didn't know him, knew nothing about him, didn't even know the, the centurion that, uh, that this man this was a servant under this centurion. A centurion means a Roman captain of the guards. He's a high-ranking Roman soldier. Jews worked for them. Jews were under their control. They could, they could make a Jew work for them. They could send a Jew into prison. They, could, they had complete control over the Jews of Israel. Romans ran that country. Romans ran all the, the area out there. And, and here we have this man, this, this, this centurion that had complete control over this person. And yet it says that he loved this, this servant. He truly cared for this servant. Here's a, a Roman soldier that, that has a lot of power and yet he we can see the, uh, the, the love he has for these people. It says he even built a synagogue for them. So he, he's a, he has a different kind of heart, and he, and he cares for this servant so much that he found out that Jesus was in the area, and he sent his Jews, people that probably worked for him, people that were under his control, and he said, go find Jesus and bring him here. Now how he knew Jesus or what he had ever known about Jesus or what he, he had seen about Jesus, we don't, we don't have the full picture of it. But he apparently had seen enough or knew enough that he knew that Jesus had the power to heal because he sent for Jesus to come and heal the very person that he cared for a lot. And so he sent for Jesus to come and heal this person. And Jesus went there. Jesus did exactly what they had requested. But Jesus never went. He never got into the house. He never saw the person. He never talked to the person. In fact, he didn't even talk to the centurion. All, just about all of his communication was through the Jews that were relaying back and forth to the centurion. So he, he has limited contact with the centurion. He has no contact with the, the servant that's inside the house. And yet, and yet he's, he's going to fulfill this request of come and heal my, my servant. And, and when, I, when I read this miracle, what it does is, is it gives me this 
this hope that that God God heal, hears the request of people that uh, that we might be praying for somebody way far away. Uh, well, I tell you, if, if you've got loved ones or family members somewhere else, and you you don't and you're not around them all the time, and you pray for them, it's good to know that God God still is moving and answering prayers somewhere else in this world. And he's hearing us right here in Brunswick, and yet he's answering to, to our, our request all the way out in Arizona, all the way out in somewhere else, up, up in the north or farther down in Florida, wherever it might be, in some other town, some other city around the state, God still is moving even though even though we're here. God is moving somewhere else because of our request. And that's what this is all about. People are requesting Jesus to minister to somebody that's somewhere else in the world. He wasn't there. And yet Jesus did that. Jesus ministered to a dying person somewhere else. And boy, I'm glad to know that, that God hears us yeah. here and ministers to somebody somewhere else because that gives us so much hope. And in verse 3, I want to just share in verse 3, it says, And when he had heard of Jesus, this is this centurion, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him, beseeching Jesus, that, that he would come and heal his servant. You know, when I, when I read that right there, I, I'm kind of reminded that people seeking help from Jesus on behalf of others, isn't it good that we can, we can seek out Jesus on behalf of other people, mm -hmm. other, somewhere else? That's the, that's the whole point of this thing right here to me is the fact that we can cry out, here's a man, here's a man, and you have to keep in mind, here's a man that, that has no faith. Here's a man that doesn't, this servant, this centurion servant, he doesn't have any faith in Jesus that we know of. It, it, it mentions nothing about his faith. He's just a Jew servant. Most likely he's not a believer. He's not a Christian. He's, he doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. And yet, what does Jesus do? Jesus not only goes to him, he heals him. That's right. and, and that, it, we sometimes miss the point that we can pray for people even though they're lost. We can pray for people even though they're far away. We can pray for people even though they don't go to church. We can pray for people and pray for people and ask God to minister to them. And we have this promise that God can do it. Amen. And he will do it many times. Why does he do it? Because of that person's faith? No, they don't have any faith at all. It's because of our faith. He answers the prayers because of us, Amen. not because of them. It, 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 Jesus listened to the Jews that came to him. Jesus didn't know the centurion. Doesn't have when there's nothing here that says, oh, they were best buds. That Jesus had no contact with this man, and yet these Jews came to him. There's, not, there's nothing here that tells us that the Jews that came to Jesus had anything to do with Jesus. That doesn't say that they were Christians either. We know nothing about them. We know nothing about the centurion. We know nothing about this man, this servant that is dying. And yet, we find out that Jesus answers the call. Amen. And, and, and well, I'm glad that we can pray for people that we might look at and say, wow, there, there's, 
there's no need in me praying for them. They're lost. They're on their way to hell. They're, they're not living right. They're not doing right. They're, they're, they're headed in the wrong direction. God's not going to God, God's not going to answer their prayer. Well, God did answer this prayer. And nowhere does it say that they were any different. Jesus responded simply because those Jews came to them and said, you know what? They said, Jesus, this centurion is worthy. Why? Because he built us a synagogue. That was that's what pretty much they based it on. He's worthy, Lord, because he built us a synagogue. He's a nice guy. But yet Jesus saw something in all of this. Jesus saw the heart of people that were needing his help. Amen. He saw something in them that they were needing for Christ to come to the aid. People seeking help from God on behalf of somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's to me, when I, when I read this miracle, it just reminds me that, that you know what, God, God not only will hear my prayer for somebody else, but he'll hear somebody else's prayer that maybe, just maybe, they're not even saved and they're crying out for help and, and all of a sudden, they need somebody, and they come to you and say, oh, would you please pray for my sister? Would you please pray for my brother? Would you please pray for this person? They need help, and you're thinking, who are these people? But still, you say, okay, I'm going to pray for them. Amen. And you never know what God will do with on praying on behalf, on behalf of somebody else. It's almost like they're passing it to this person, but this person has no contact with God. They don't know anything about God. They have no clue about God. They go to somebody, else, and what do they do? They finally find somebody that goes to church, and they say, would you pray for my long-lost brother or sister, and your, your prayer all of a sudden, Boom, works. Amen. It, it's just, it's just that we, we're to pray on behalf of other people. That's, in verse seven, in verse seven, I want you to see something else here. It says in verse seven, wherefore neither thought I myself worthy. This is the centurion talking. Uh, neither, he says, uh, Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee, but say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. These people had faith in what Jesus could and would do. These people had faith in what Jesus, and, and get, these, get this, the double, the double faith here. These people had faith in what Jesus could and would do. That's two different kinds of faith. They had faith in what Jesus could do. You see, they knew Jesus could heal. They went to Jesus. They had faith in what he could do. But it's a different ball game on having faith on what Jesus would do. Could do is one thing. Would do is another thing. And yet they had faith in both. They had faith in what Jesus could do. They knew he could do it. That's the reason they went to him. But they also had faith in what he would do. They went to him because they said, you know what? He will. We're going to go to him because we're going to depend on him to to heal. We're going to depend on him to do that. And I'm glad that we can have faith in not only what Jesus will do, but what Jesus can do. That's right. What he can do and what he will do. Two different things, but yet we need to have faith in both. 
I know Jesus can do it, but the problem that I have to get over is will Jesus do it? And you see, that's the that's where so many people fail in faith. They know Jesus can do it. He can do anything. But will he do it? And that's where most people, that's where faith breaks down in a lot of people's lives. And yet these people, they went straight to Jesus because not only did they know he could do it, because every the, the centurion said, go get him. I know he can do it. I've seen him do it. He's, he's done miracles before. We know he's done miracles before. Go get him. But they, but they also had to have faith that he would do it. And so, they, and so the centurion says, all you have to do, you don't even need to come into my house. All you have to do is just say the word. That's right. All you have to do is just say the word and it'll be. He, he knew. He said, just say the word. And, and then he, he absolutely had that faith that it was going to be done. And you see, that's, the, that's where people sometimes have that breakdown of faith, of just knowing that Jesus will do it. And we've got to have that faith that Jesus will do it. In verses 6, you notice in verse 6 it said, Then Jesus went with them, and when he was now not Far from the house, the centurion sent uh, friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Here this centurion was humble when he was seeking help from Christ. Here's another thing that I, that I see in all of this, is, the, is that this, this centurion was humble. He had to humble himself before the Lord. So many times people have a hard time humbling themselves before the Lord when it comes to prayer. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, we, we, tend to, we tend to think that, uh, boy, that, that this centurion would have thought of himself to be worthy of all of this. But he, but he said, no, I'm not worthy. I, you, just, you just say the word and it'll be done. But but you don't have to come to my house because I'm not worthy to have you in my house. Boy, that's the kind of that's the kind of heart we need to have. <clears throat> Amen. And so, and, and in verse ten it says this: and they that were sent, returning to the house, found the servant whole that had been sick. This man was healed completely from far off. That's what I like about this, this healing that took place, this miracle that took place right here was the fact that it was not right in the presence of Jesus. It was not right there where Jesus was. It was not in the synagogue. It was not where, uh, where you would have thought that the healing would have taken place. But the healing took place in the centurion's house and Jesus never even entered into the centurion's house. Amen. And, uh, and you know, so many times we pray for somebody that might be in a place <clears throat> far, far away and might be in a place that's not, that we might say is, is not church oriented. They, they, could, they could be living under some bad conditions. They could be living in a, in a house in which Christ is far from it. They could be living <coughs> under conditions that are, that, are, that are not conducive to Christianity. And yet, the prayer, the prayer is heal that person in those conditions. Heal that person, reach that person, speak to that person's heart. Even though they're living under under some bad conditions, even though they're living in a in a house in which Christianity is not even mentioned, and yet we're praying that somehow God reach them, and he, and he can, That's right. he can, That's right. because he reached into a house, into a centurion that we have we have no knowledge that this centurion was a Christian, we have no knowledge right here. That, that, that this home was anything other than the, the home of a centurion soldier. 
but he cared for the Jews enough that he would apparently was a good person. But we have no we have no knowledge here that he that he made Christianity foremost in their lives. And yet Jesus healed in that house, which tells me that, you know, that Christ can still reach people in places that that you would think that, oh, well, God's not going to work there. God's not going to reach them. God's not going to get into that house. That's a bad situation. That's a bad home. That's bad conditions. And yet Jesus healed into that home of a Roman soldier to people that didn't even know Jesus. And yet he healed. Which tells me we should never give up. Amen. We should never quit praying Amen. for these people, no matter what conditions they live under. So let's let's pray tonight for our loved ones, our family members, our friends, uh, those that are out there that we wanna we wanna lift up in in prayer, uh, no matter what conditions they're in and what what they're facing. So let's let's have a word of prayer.